hello everyone and welcome back to this humble abode of gameplay and memes. Today I return to you with yet another replay commentary of Supreme Commander Forged Alliance Forever. So this time we've got a very high ranked game. I think this game was played as a 1400 and up lobby. And I'm sure with this much mass to work with, as you can clearly see there is like a million mixes on the map. I'm sure those high skilled players will come up with something spectacular to entertain us today. So this map is a randomly generated map created by the Neroxus Map Generator. And uh, yes, it's got uh, a grand total of 2000 reclaim on it, which seems to be yeah, scattered in, in some tiny rocks here and there, some trees, and uh, those uh, wreckages of what looks like Seraphim, yeah, Seraphim naval factories. And that's about it. So tons and tons of mass extractors, but also basically no reclaim whatsoever. So you just build those extractors like it's crazy rush, like there is no tomorrow. And hopefully you succeed. But anyway, let's go ahead and start introducing our players before it's too late. I'll probably, should probably slow the game down slightly to make sure that I don't miss out on anything. Because, you know, the action can start pretty soon here. Anyway, let's go ahead and start with Team 1. In the... What is this? In the purple corner. Starting from west to east, first of all is going to be a Chief Jaguar, who we've already seen a few times. Quite a high ranked player, quite a high skill player, and one who has been around for quite a long time. He is going to be playing UEF at 2000 rank points and Thalassophobia Blue going first land and no other factory so far. Next up is going to be his first teammate, is going to be somebody named Plunder. Oh, makes you shudder like a true pirate, right? Or something like that. Uh, going to be playing Cybran at 1400 rank points, wearing Shrinking Violet, and going first land and what looks like possibly second air. Not quite visible just now, but just yet. Their teammate on the position furthest removed from the enemy, at least so it would seem, is going to be Donny Noob, uh, playing at 1600 rank points, playing Aeon. In power play purple, going first land and building some generators around mass extractors for hopeful energy discount. And next up, a little bit closer to this weird lake in the middle, is going to be Trif at 1900 rank points playing Cybran in wet concrete grey, going first land, second land. And last but not least for this team, it is, we've got the man, the myth, the legend, Hachamachama, also known as Yudi, playing Aeon at 2300 rank points, which is the best rank at, in this game at all, the highest rated player, playing Aeon in his favorite, but still pink, going first land, second land. Moving on to team 2. In the red corner, starting conversely from the east, first one on the list is going to be Shen. Uh, at 1800 rank points, playing UEF in Coronate Red, uh, going first land and no other factory so far. And next up, his teammate right next to him is going to be No Fear 555, yes. It isn't someone who has who has no fear to speak of, it is someone who forces their enemies to know fear and despair and all of this other delicious stuff. A play at 1700 rank points playing Seraphim in blues blue going first land, second land, third land. The furthest removed from the enemy on this team is going to be Blast Chilled, who we've definitely also seen before at 2000 rank points playing Aeon. In fresh and fragrant orange, going first land, second air. Uh, next up in uh, beautiful, not yet fashionable, but soon to be winter wipeout white. It is 1500 player known as Skrat. Yes, you have to pronounce it like that because of the K, clearly. Uh, playing Aeon, going first land and second land, and third air. And last but not least for this particular team and for this match uh, in general is going to be Bullied Noob! 
Cube. At 2200 rank points, second highest rated player in the game, playing Cybran in very appropriate for this faction Ferrari Red, or Road Rage Red as I like to call it. Going first land, second land, and third land. Anyway, let's speed the game up slightly, see what the players are up to, and what are they down to. We will see very soon who goes up and who goes down. Yeah, there is also this weird, like, dividing line <laughs> across the map's equator. I'm not entirely sure why the map decided, the map generator decided to <laughs> cause the equator to be marked down like this. You can see there is a white line on the east, interestingly enough, and a black line on the west. Really not quite sure what that's all about. But yes, we've got people advancing, of course, advancing towards this demarcation line, I guess we can call that. Already the island being occupied by Skrat playing uh, Aeon, of course. He has some Aurora tanks and scouts supporting his engineers who are already claiming this island for themselves. Aurora is also chasing down some engineers out from Plunder, one engineer already going down. First scouts flying out from both teams, going to be looking very closely, spying on uh, their direct counterparts and whatnot seeing who goes for what build maybe they can even make decisions based on solely on how many generators the enemy has i don't know i can get into the head of those players even if i watch their streams or something like that still not entirely sure what they're doing and why they're just too big brain to comprehend sometimes like right now yudi being surrounded by possibly two enemy commanders and a whole bunch of tanks it looks as though he could be in some trouble here because it's possible that No Fear would just, you know, chase him down all the way towards his base and kill him, but No Fear knows better, of course. He also knows fear, surprisingly, or unsurprisingly perhaps, depending on who you ask, so he knows that Yudi will probably bring a whole bunch more stuff to beer, and uh, it's probably not entirely worth going there, even though I feel like if you can eliminate Yudi from the game, uh, a little bit of a, maybe a little bit of a mean thing to say, but if you can eliminate Yudi from the game, you will definitely hurt the enemy team big time. Even if No Fear dies, you know, he's a 1700 versus a 2300 Yudi. It could still be worth it just to eliminate him from the game and put a little bit more of a strain on the enemy's APM. Aurora's running around everywhere in the pond, of course, in the lake, as they do. Destroying engineers from afar They are a little bit too late though because already there have been some uh, naval factories constructed by both Donnie Noob as well as Trith so it seems like It seems like the players are definitely going to be fighting for uh, the pawn So that is something to take note of Meanwhile though it looks like Bully Noob is kind of running over the western flank where Chief Jaguar and Blunder are making their plans. However, this all changes when Ajiv Jaguar suddenly rolls out a T2 tank. Yes, that's right. He's already achieved. Ajiv Jaguar has already achieved T2 land this early in the game, seven minutes in. Already pillar tanks rolling out and oppressing those mantises who are forced to run away post haste. Meanwhile, on the right flank, we've got gun speed being attempted by Skrat, probably as a countermeasure to those things, which are there are already six of them, that could be a serious threat even to the commander. On the eastern flank, meanwhile, we've got some clashes as per usual, people just kind of shooting each other, racking up some experience on their commanders, hopefully anyway. No upgrades so far, except for Yudi, who is also going for the Aeon double gun, as you'd expect. When there are so many commanders at play, you definitely need some of that firepower early game firepower which will allow your commander to get tankier by killing stuff as well as just protect it from advancing enemy troops because you will outrange them and kill them before they can reach you <laughs> not entirely sure what of uh, the uh, furthest players are doing it seems like both blast shield and Danya are kind of taking their sweet time or not no never mind they're already upgrading to t3 air I'm assuming Blast Shield is doing the same, although his commander is all the way at the front. But uh, 
And no, actually, he is making some... Yeah, he's, he's got two T2 Air Factories, and is now upgrading his first one. And only starting to upgrade his first one to T3. Meanwhile, Donnie's probably already done with that. Yeah, almost. That is some serious difference, though. In uh, their uh, T3 Air timings, I would say. Ultimately, it probably won't matter, because the map is big. I forgot to mention, I think this map is a 15 by 15 because it, the game says 20 by 20 that usually uh, but since there are those black uh, streaks at the border that usually means the map is slightly smaller than advertised in which case it's going to be a 15 by 15. yes mantis is still being chased away by the pillar tanks some um, pillars barely even taking any damage although one of them is almost dead but they, it absorbed like all of the damage from all of the enemy t1 units Oh, and now Scrat is going uh, after finish, having finished both of the gun upgrades, is now going for a Chrono Dampener. Ooh, very interesting indeed. Chrono Dampener is always a treat to see, and it's an absolute menace against T2 units. They are just f easy pickings for an AM commander with double gun and Chrono Dampener. Definitely going to dampen their spirits, that's for sure. Haha, <laughs> get it, because Aeon Scouts are called Spirit. Anyway, T2 Land and T2 Air hit the field. It looks like there was a whole bunch of uh, Janus bombers attempting to destroy some of Yudi's infrastructure, but he has so many interceptors that those Janus bombers did get shut down before they could... Well, no, they did destroy his T2 power generators, but I'm sure he probably reclaimed them considering the nearby factory is not damaged at all. And Yudi's already producing T3 Land. Has anyone else had hit T3 Land yet? It looks like Bully Noob has. He's now, yep, he's now advancing with loyalists towards the front line, destroying some of the T1 spam that the enemy has. However, he has to be extremely careful not feed all of them to, to plunder. He is working with stealth and gun now. A very formidable commander indeed, and it is supported by a whole bunch of shields, as well as pillar tanks and a gun comm out from Jaguar, who is not actually going towards the loyalists, but instead pushing closer towards Bully Noob's base. Very interesting choice indeed, we'll see if it pays off. T3 scouts flying around now from Donny. Oh, of course T3 fighters are already out for blast as well, so no uh, no surprises there. No, you know, crushing air victories or whatever. No air crush as it were, just yet. Swarms of interceptors out from Yugi and Trith are keeping them safe. Meanwhile, on the far southeast we've got factories being destroyed for Shen. It seems like... Yeah, it seems like he just way went for... Hmm? Oh. Interesting. Racing shift lags the game for some reason. I guess I should avoid doing that. Only press control shift, maybe, when I want to see how much reclaim there is. It's currently 12,000. Okay, fair enough. I sure hope my recording is fine, but it should be, because... Why wouldn't it be, right? <laughs> Except possibly because of the massive scale of the battles. Because this game is, is shaping up to be truly epic. Anyway, we've got some loyalists destroying or attempting to destroy some of uh, these pillar tanks, but it looks like they will be chased away by a chief Jaguar's commander. Definitely don't want to lose these loyalists. If you build a large enough group of them, they can just steamroll the commander unexpectedly, so it's probably best not to throw them away just like that. Uh, I've, well, I dare say Plunder is pushing a little bit too far though, he's almost like at, in the starting location of Bully Noob as evident from the fact that there is a multiple T3 factories now, uh, one headquarters, one support factory and another one being upgraded. You need to, yeah, I think you need to hold your horses and uh, run away a little bit uh, further back towards the safer positions. Meanwhile, though Scrat is an absolute rampage, already 1500 mass killed. Shows no signs of stopping, and he will be shooting uh, opposing interceptors soon as well, or or not. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Meanwhile, in terms of economy, we've of course got people building up. They seem to be mostly equal, except for Plunder, who's only working with 65, which is super far behind everybody else. I'm not entirely sure what's up with that. I guess mm, perhaps he has given some of the territory that would have been his. I think he's given some of that to Jaguar, as evident from these five mass extractors being owned by Jaguar, while on the opposite side of the map they are owned by the same guy who by the counterpart of Plunder, so I guess that's the reason. 
I think you, you can trust Jagger with this mask though for sure. Yeah, you see he's completely out of it. No, it has been, he has none despite having so many more extractors. So at least that's a good sign, relatively. All right, yes, T3, of course, hitting the field from every corner. We've got Harbingers for Skrat. We've got ourselves some... Oh, it's another serious Janus assault on the generators. Uh, this time, well, they destroyed all of the engineers. But now there's a T3 power generator for Yudi, and I really don't feel like those destroying those generators is going to make any difference whatsoever. Yeah, you can't destroy T3 because it's got too much health. And now the air squadron of... Uh, who is this again? Donnie, right? An air squadron of Donnie runs in and cleans all of them up. However, Yudi's base might be in a little bit of trouble as there is a whole host of titans running directly into it. Yeah, you can't stop these with, uh, with fighters, <laughs> that's for sure. They destroy all of the power generators, the, this one is probably going to explode as well, yep, the T3 power generator explodes. Yuri does have some snipers who are, should be quite adept at dealing with titans, however they are running a little bit too close to comfort. Or for comfort, I should say, so they might also be threatened. Bricks now rolling out from Trif in attempts to stop this titan push, but the titans just keep going, the, the two bricks can't stop this many. And they just keep going, destroying Yudi's extractors. There is another group that has run in and destroying, is destroying yet more of Yudi's extractors. <laughs> Yudi is definitely getting a lot of hate from Shin. <laughs> more Janus bombers running in. They could, oh yeah, they can kill snipers very easily, right? Because snipers, you know, they are extremely squishy. I, I think, yeah, I think they've already killed a whole bunch of snipers, but there is still a large group for Yudi. He should be able to defend against new incoming forces, however the first group of titans has already run past and this is, is quite far away already. Destroying a whole bunch of more mass extractors out, this is so painful, this is uh, extremely painful, look at this, already UD being reduced to 120, uh, 130 mass per second, meanwhile his counterpart on the other side of the map being bullied noob is working with 249, oh no, this is horrible. Oh, poor UD man. <laughs> Can't catch a break in this game. Yeah. I think since people realize he's so good at the game, they just continually try to, you know, diminish his successes as much as possible because you know, they know that if he's left alone, he's gonna carry the game by himself, so they just give him as hard of a time as they possibly can. Look at this, a bunch of T2 gunships being dispatched to destroy those titans. Now, of course, these gunships are practically invincible right now because, you know, the air of Donnie of course in the area, however, they did their job, they destroyed so many massive strikers it's kinda crazy. They could keep going and destroy even more, but they just kinda stopped moving there. I guess, uh, yeah, I guess Shen is microing something else in the meantime. Yeah, so we've got, yeah, the clashes on, on the western flank aren't nearly as exciting. Sure, you've got Chrono Dampener against, uh, Million Titans, which yes, if you were wondering, Chrono Dampener does stun Titans, you just saw that. Uh, see? <laughs> Half of them just freeze there. I guess we can show a cinematic shot of the Titans and Harbingers just pounding each other into dust. It is pretty entertaining, you know. Also some flag blasts going off in the distance. Some fireworks for your viewing pleasure. We got some mantises too, which I have no idea what those are doing here. I guess, you know, <clears throat> tanking some DPS from the Titans is not that bad. Skrat is retreating, he can still, you know, he can still control these titans for the base at which they are advancing, so he's probably safe here, especially with those bricks arriving out from Bully Noob. It was looking scary there for a second, but I feel like he should be just fine, especially considering there is a very large group of loyalists now sweeping through the little far western side. Destroying some of the properties of Skr uh, not Skrat, sorry, this is the Chief Jaguar. They haven't destroyed too much so far, just a couple T1 factories, nobody cares about that, but... Oh, 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 Shen got killed by... Oh! Shen got killed by Donnie, so it, it looks like Donnie just flew in, created a fighter screen, and then all of his gunships went in and destroyed uh, Shen. So I guess now, <laughs> with Shen gone, Yudi will be getting a little bit less hate <laughs> as he has uh, lost his main hater, at least in this particular match. Where is his commander anyway? I can't see it anywhere. Uh, hello? Where is Yudi's commander? 
and oh pff, and i miss another kill on the left flank as finally plunder oversteps his welcome and gets destroyed by scratch uh, these guys harbingers right yep got surrounded and killed by harbingers as you know as a chief jaguar withdrew his titans to deal with the opposing loyalists which have all been killed now can't even see them or no they haven't been killed they just retreated but uh, yeah, the loyalists created a diversion which then allowed the harbingers of scrat to run in and destroy plunder's acu who was too slow and stuck around here for too long of course we've got some t3 mobile artillery now pounding those titans they are feeling extremely uncomfortable about that i'm sure look at this Bound. yep and there is nothing they can do in return in retaliation so they just run away the middle island is still being controlled by Donnie after uh, you know the extensive efforts of by both Donnie and Triff to go into navy they are now controlling the middle island the gunships are now coming in for scrat and i'm not entirely sure you can do anything about that look at this there is like 20 gunships in the area there one interceptor flies in and tries to shoot them down uh the gunships fly away huh i think he realized there is a whole bunch of flak in the base and he had basically no choice, no chance of destroying the commander there, so he just pulled out. All right, fair enough. T3 Sam launchers being constructed everywhere by No Fear, who's inherited uh, Shen's base as well. So No Fear is now working with both UEF and Seraphim technology. First experimentals are hitting the field out for both Achieve Jaguar and UD. Let me see what kind of experimental UD has. I I can't see that. I, I don't understand. I, I lost Yuji's commander before, now I can see the experimental that he's built. Uh, it's getting a little bit weird over here. But look at all these titans advancing towards the position of Skrat! Of course, you know, of course his uh, chrono dampener is still keeping them at bay. There's a whole bunch of T1 turrets here, but there are barely any T3 units. You know, T3 bots protecting him. There's some harbingers. However, now with this red tide flowing in from Bully Noob, it looks like Skrat should be relatively safe, unless of course the Titans go for the snipe on him specifically and destroy his commander, but I don't think that will matter too much even if they do, so they just retreat. Some bricks coming in, the bricks also get stunned by the Chrono Dampener. Oh no, these bricks could get very easily caught and give some of that precious, precious, delicious, nutritious mass to the commander of whoever picks it up, be it Skrat or bully noob we'll see yet but yeah i don't see what those experimentals are okay fair enough it's a monkey lord out from the yeah, chief jaguar as you'd expect the first experimental or the second experimental in the game is a monkey lord but i am really confused as to which one yudi has built uh am i imagining things here or or what let's control c like this no, I don't see it. Someone else has built an experimental, I'm pretty sure. Maybe... I don't know, maybe Jaguar gave that to Yudi, but then he gave it back. Epic Chrono says, says Jaguar, yep. <laughs> the Chrono Dampener allowed him to basically kill all of the... Bricks. And, oh yeah, and all the Titans as well, yep. All of them are dead. Because of of all this commo commotion with the chrono dampener a squadron of t1 jester gunships flies in and tries to kill scrat and scrat it does absolutely nothing an air engagement breaks out between donnie and bully noob i i was thinking blast chill was their air player but i guess bully noob is also making some of those fighters uh janus bombers fly in for no reason and die without firing a single shot or dropping a single bomb in this case interesting okay well, Yudi has most certainly stabilized on the eastern flank. You can see he is now holding the territory down. He's rebuilt all of the mixes as you'd expect. He's already back to four, almost 500 mass per second, which is uh, not quite near the top, but fairly close. No fear is currently the one with the most income at that 575 per second. And he still has room to grow, you know, all these mass extractors behind his main base are still on upgraded and i think they are there yeah there must be a group of engineers walking around upgrading them slowly but surely so no fear still has plenty of room to grow 
as does Yudi, of course, but Yudi is still fairly far behind uh, that guy. Yes. So, even though, of course, we have lost two players, we've lost Shen from Team 2 and Plunder from Team 1, their deaths might have kind of sort of benefited their teammates because the teammates inherited their bases and are now upgrading those as well. So, food for thought, I suppose. When the game is being played by f with full share, which is usually the case when there is a lobby, there is a map gen lobby, this is usually what happens, and uh, the deaths of those teammates, they technically benefit the other players in the game because they get so much income, so much more income that they can, they can pump out a monkey lord instantly, kind of like Ajiv Jagger did. He's now working with a megalith as well, in fact it looks like he's queued up, yeah, a couple more megaliths to boot. To make sure uh, that his front is very well protected indeed. We've got a congregation of fighters uh, building up, of course. There is a hundred and twenty-four Donnie, approximately, and approximately two hundred for Blast. Well, that's a lot. <clears throat> yeah, it looks like all of the fighters that Bullied Noob makes, the Cybern ones, he gives to Blast Shield. So, for now, it looks like the Air Force of Team 2 vastly outmatches that uh, of Team 1. And that could be a cause for concern, because, you know, Controlling air means you can fly in and destroy your enemy with a whole bunch of gunships or bombers. And that's not always a good sign. Or indeed a Tsar, like the one Skrat just made. There you go. The beautiful Donut of the Aeon is on a direct collision course with the Megalith of Achieve Jaguar. And with such a huge air force, I am not entirely sure the Megalith can even be protected. However, it looks like the Megalith is focusing its shots on the commander of Skrat. And it looks like our fancy name of the day, or hilarious name of the day, gets destroyed here. Yep. Gets eliminated from the game. All of the restorer gunships, which, yes, uh, it turns out Blast Shield has a few restorer gunships, as well as all of the fighters are in the area protecting the donut, which has now been transferred to Bullied Noob. The, the entire base of Skrat gets transferred to Bullied Noob. It looks like the Megalith is trying to run for the water, which makes a lot of sense because, uh, you know, restorers can hit you while you are underwater, and the donut, mm, uh, its DPS will be dramatically reduced when attacking a. Uh, an underwater target, but no, it doesn't make it. The fighters are still <laughs> the fighters from Donny are still uh, deliberating whether he or not he should attack. At this point, I feel like he shouldn't because there are just so many more fighters for Team Two that he will just lose air for no reason. He might be thinking about shooting down these restorers, but the enemy fighters are still in the area. You need to be extremely careful and a pause. Uh, Chief Jaguar, yes, P time, me too, P time. Okay. We got it. We dealt with the problem. Back to work. Yeah, it looks like the island is being a little bit threatened, which is unfortunate because Donnie's got <laughs> six land factories on that, all producing Aeon T2 blaze tanks, which are now being sent somewhere. Yeah, I guess they're being sent to harass the shores belonging to No Fear, and there isn't too much in terms of ground defense here, so he could be a little bit of cause for concern. Well, actually, there is a plenty of T3 Seraphim tanks now standing on the shore, ready to meet those blaze tanks. So, uh, a bit of a bummer there. Now, the blaze tanks are just free mass for uh, whoever can claim it first, be it a blast shield or no fear. We still can't, uh, aren't too sure. The, the donut continues its rampage now, attacking a monkey lord as well. I think the monkey lord is just dead because, yeah, it's just got nowhere to go. The monkey lord goes AFK. Just stands there and accepts his fate. Donnie, meanwhile, is still not engaging. Still, the fighters and the or the don't and the restorers are still having free reign. Look at this! All the Purcell is getting fried. The don't is now in pursuit of yet another megalith. The restorers are not allowing the enemy fighters to get too close because they've got long-range uh, anti-air missiles. As has the donut, and it looks like for now the don't is being forced to retreat, though. As, uh, yeah, he doesn't want to engage all the fighters, I guess, well, I guess whoever is controlling the donut doesn't want to engage right now. <laughs> there is still, however, a suitably large land force that the donut could very easily destroy, but it would probably get shot down in the process, so he just kind of doesn't want to do that. <laughs> just kind of deliberating. Oh, that's a mistake. Oh, no, 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 that was bad. Yep. <laughs> The fighters started getting, started getting shot by a megalith, that's never a good thing. 
You do not should not land your extremely fragile planes next to the most powerful land experimental in the game. The biggest the biggest unit the absolutist unit of the Cybern. Meanwhile though on the right flank we've got an attack attempt by Yudi. I think Yudi is the instigator here. He is attacking uh, the Seraphim fortified positions. Interestingly enough though, it doesn't look like the Seraphim here have any shields whatsoever. Meanwhile there's a whole bunch of projectiles fired by Absolver shield disruptors being fired from Yudi. So he's got plenty of Absolvers it seems like as well as some loyalists. Yeah, so these Absolvers are basically doing no damage, you know. Absolver is a unique Aeon unit which does lots and lots of damage to shields, but barely any damage to units who don't have those, and right now it seems like there are no shields in the area whatsoever. Which is very interesting, you know, it's a force of Seraphim and UEF units, and yet none of them have brought shields to bear. It's almost like they knew that half of the enemy force is gonna be Absolvers, so they just didn't bother. But Janus Bomber's flying in, let's see if they can do any substantial damage. They could barely destroy those Asylum shields, that's for sure. But I think the shields came back online too early. And that looks like some fat boy shells, yep, there we go. A fat boy out from No Fear should put an absolute stop to this push. But slowly but surely, the enemy force will get eradicated. They're already, you can see the Harbingers and the Asylums already suffering. Have to run away. Even though, you know, even Absolvers cannot technically reach the enemy. Oh, look at this. Look at this. The Restorers are now attacking the T3 battleship that has come out of Trith's and <laughs> naval factories. Trith is really going going really hard into Navy. But it looks like that won't really matter at all. Because the Restorers just completely eradicate this battleship. Actually, no. Never mind. The battleship is still <laughs> floating and still attacking. The Restorers are going further towards Yudi's main base, they are starting to focus the T3 mass extractors of Yudi. Look at this, look at this beautiful row of butterflies. I think I'm gonna put that on the thumbnail, if I can find them. Look at this, destroying all the T3 mixes. Now they're focusing the factories, they're reaching more T3 mixes, as well as a whole bunch of power generators. This is an extremely juicy target for them. And it seems like Donnie is still afraid to engage, although no, not quite. Actually, Donnie is engaging right as we speak. There's a whole bunch of death and destruction going on here. Well, no death, but a whole bunch of destruction of property, I suppose. There is um, a massive air fight that just broke out. And it's not entirely clear who's won that. Uh, can I... Uh, mm -hmm. Let me see. It looks like... It looks like Donny actually lost this fight. But he's got more reinforcements coming in. And it looks like all of the fighters from Blast are flying into Yudi's base. Well, there is a metric freak ton of factories now just pumping out Ascendant uh, flak cannons as well as Redeemer T3 and Mobile Anti Air. He realized his error, so he retreats with the fighters while the Restorers still continue their rampage. Look at this, I'm destroying another yet little cluster of mixes. That cannot be good for your economy, let me just tell you that. 800, uh, 800 mass per second left for Yudi. Compare that to Blasters working with uh, 1400 or uh, Bully Doom, who's recently got the same, but has a hell of a lot less territory than Yudi does, and is currently being pressured by a couple of Megaliths. Yes, the Chief Jaguar continues his buildup of Megaliths and his pushes. Uh, the, yeah, the Donut, we kind of missed the Donut getting shot down, but you know. Donny's fighters uh, have taken serious losses, so that was a price to pay for the donut, I suppose. Now we're going, <laughs> we're having Yudi almost getting killed by the restorers. They chased him all the way into a lake, where of course they cannot hurt him anymore. But you know, this is still a problem. <laughs> mass extractor is still getting destroyed, not just from Yudi but from Trith as well. Now, the massive horde of uh, one of these ascendants and redeemers, right? are still trying to chase down the restorers, but failing so far. What? <laughs> this is hilarious. It looks like, yeah, it does look like Donnie is building his air force back up, so very soon he will probably be ready to attack these restorers, but for now they still have free reign and they are still destroying. They have destroyed so many T3 mass extractors, it's just absolutely tragic. And not just mass extractors, but generators as well. T3 generators also suffering under the glorious restorers. Oh yeah, they didn't attack they didn't attack the T3 naval factory of Trith because Trith just built a massive amount of T1 anti-air. I don't think that would have held them back necessarily because there are just so many. But for now it looks like um, 
Yeah, it looks like they are about to get attacked. Oh, there is a, like a war going on two fronts. We should probably do the split view right here. Last time I did a split view, it was a little bit of a disaster, but hopefully I, I can do a better job this time. Two megaliths on the flank. Yep, two megaliths getting destroyed by a whole bunch of restorers. All the restorers are getting chased down. The former restorer cloud out from control V, uh, out from this person. Blast shield are getting chased down by the fighters and destroyed. They're also flying through a whole bunch of missile defense, anti-air missile defense. Meanwhile, a donut is attacking the, hello? Oh, wrong button, my bad. The, the donut is attacking the megaliths. One of the megaliths is about to go down. I'm pretty sure I can't actually hover my mouse over it because it just restores. Wait, it's all restores. Oops. And yes, both of the megaliths actually go down. It's a tragedy for the Cybrans. Two of megaliths getting destroyed so easily. And yes, indeed. That was quite a spectacular battle. And we basically got both parts of it. Now there's just a bunch of flak cannons who are running away in panic as loyalists, bricks, and harbingers chase them down and destroy them with ease, completely unopposed. But it's not the end, you see. <laughs> there's a whole bunch of sand launchers being built up everywhere by Chief Jaguar. Rascom's hitting the front line, building yes, building those sand launchers here and there in order to prevent further attacks by enemy domus and restorers. So even though this massive cloud of restorers that uh, blast shield formerly had all got basically all got destroyed he's still got another one right here <laughs> he's still building them up and got another donut for his trouble as well so blast is doing really well for himself so far however that could change with even more megaliths appearing out from Jaguar two megaliths already on the field there are basically two there's basically a megalith production facility here with a whole bunch of <laughs> hives focused solely on creating more megaliths, meanwhile there is also a group of engineers who are doing much of the same but separately, so basically Chief Jaguar is currently pumping out two megaliths at a time with the highest economy on his team at 1100 per second uh, mass of course this is nothing compared to what Blast is working with and together Blast and Bully Nubar Go, going to or probably going to seriously bully Jaguar here unless somebody helps him I sure hope somebody does help him because yeah that's quite a difference in economy well you can't really say that uh, you know Blast Chill is just uh, fighting or bringing all of his economy to bear on the, on the western flank that is simply not true he's also producing a whole bunch of huh yeah he's making a whole bunch of restorers and fighters who are just hovering around waiting for the next assignment so it's not like he's spending all of his mess to fight Jaguar, so it's more like Jaguar versus Bully Noob on the western flank right now. No Fear constructs yet another experimental. It's it's another fat boy, yes, but also I'm hearing Yithofa firing somewhere, and yes indeed there's one chicken. And there must be one on the front line as well, I can't see it. Oh yeah, it's right there. Uh, why you guys don't make scouts? See, it says Blunder who's already dead. You understand everything from Omni? <laughs> and Donnie New responds with, because I hope they have a Paragon. <laughs> okay, fair enough. A bunch of Corsairs, as ordered, flying into the Fat Boy of No Fear. Uh, the Fat Boy actually took it pretty well, all things considered. But there are more, yet more Corsairs flying out from Trif. Uh, they still failed to kill it, but I'm sure there are more in the area. Yeah, I feel like there are still more of them flying. A thousand health left on the fat boy, so it's, yeah, it's not very long for life. And some Corsairs got a second pass, so there you go. The fat boy goes down. The chicken is actually running away from the opposing galactic colossus that's being constructed by Yudi. Interestingly enough, <laughs> a very interesting team composition out from No Fear. He's using uh, mostly harbingers for ground to ground combat while uh, his uh, ground to air or anti air defense. Consists of uh, lightning tanks, of the Seraphim lightning tanks, that are not redeemers. Or rather, Seraphim lightning tanks and also cougars, UEF cougars. So, yeah, he's actually got the forces of all three factions here. He's got uh, Seraphim, UEF, and Aeon all working in unison. Very interesting indeed. Meanwhile, Yudi is mostly working with Aeon, but of course, they've got, you know, they've got GCs, though, they've got absolvers, which. Uh, no fear isn't using. They've got redeemers, harbingers, asylums, all that good stuff. 
And it looks like there is comparatively... Oh, and snipers, yeah. And it looks like comparatively there is way more of Yudi here than there is... This guy. Uh, no fear. Oh, look at the <laughs> look at the row of GCs. <laughs> yes, Yudi is doing basically the same thing Jaguar is doing, but with GCs instead of Megaliths. It's quite a pretty sight to look at. A bunch of strategic bombers fly in at the Thotha, uh, destroy a third of his health. It's still not enough, but oh, look at those Corsairs. Oh, the Corsairs are here, and they are focusing on the chicken, and the chicken goes down. The Colossus, of course, runs away immediately because it realized what's gonna happen next. Yeah, Yudi needs to split here and actually have his troops run away for a moment, allowing the lightning to go through. But meanwhile, though, we've got four Megaliths, five Megaliths and a five boy from Jaguar versus two, formerly two, now just one Megalith out from, out from Bullied Noob. However, the problem is there is also a whole bunch of uh, whaler gunships here. Bullied Noob seems to have switched from producing fighters to, to producing uh, whaler gunships, and now they are focusing those megaliths quite, quite handily indeed. There's just about, there's I think there's like less than 20, uh, yeah, less than 20 gunships here, but they did the job. They destroyed one megalith. They could easily destroy these two megaliths as well, because they are so low health, but he feels like he needs more of the gunships for now, so he has four megaliths uh, and a fat boy versus zero megaliths on the enemy side and no experimentals in sight at all. There is one megalith but it's pretty far behind. Very interesting developments indeed. It looks like an air engagement might be brewing on the eastern flank as all of the fighters and all of the restorers are here out from Blast and Donnie's fighters are also in the area so Donnie doesn't seem to be too interested in helping Jaguar win ill or against his aerial problems but i'm sure i'm sure all these sam launchers will also come in handy as jaguar's rascoms are walking along the front line and building more yeah see this megalith is just gonna die there is no way there is nothing that could stop this death of course uh boom down that goes but so many flat cannons the whalers have to be extremely careful lest they get shredded in seconds uh, the restorers are attacking, so we will get our air engagement here. Yes, it looks like the players are getting close. We can see the purple Aeon fighters, which are very easy, thankfully, very easy to, to tell apart from the orange Aeon fighters and restorers of Bull... Uh, who is this again? Blast Shield, excuse me. The fighters are flying in. They are chasing the restorers away. It seems like the restorers are retreating. The donut is now in the area as well. Out from Blast Shield, it's gonna be leading the charge together with some chickens on the ground. The restorers are... Yes, the restorers are retreating. The donut is hovering over everything. The fighters from Donny are still flying in. Yes, there is no shortage of them whatsoever. They are not focusing the donut, interestingly enough. It looks like they are focusing on the restorers. Which might be a bad idea because, like, the restorers are there, but yeah, I feel like you have to destroy the dome first. Never mind, the moment I say that the dome gets destroyed, will uh, reduce from 100 to 0 health. Or 100%, I mean, to 0, and down that goes. It looks like, yeah, it went straight down, like, uh, fell flat. I was expecting the donuts, you know, donuts usually fall on the side, but this one fell completely flat. It looks like the, the fighters of Danya are now being chased away, but then turning again. So it seems like, for now, uh, the fight has subsided, but in the meantime, those whalers, <laughs> perfect play by Bully Noob here. He realizes that, you know, the fighters of the enemy are preoccupied with something else, so they just go in, destroy more megaliths, uh, are about to destroy the fat boy as well. And together with this one megalith from the, from his ground forces, it seems like they managed to destroy about, yeah, four megaliths of the enemy, it's kind of crazy. Also some whalers being built up by uh, Blast Shield apparently, so he's building both whalers and other types of gunships. But in the meantime, there is a huge air snipe attempt on the commander, on the commander of Blast Shield, of strategic bombers as well as Corsairs, uh, Aeon strategic bombers, I should say, flying out en masse. Um, some of them drop bombs, most of the bombs do seem to get, to get gotten blocked by shields, but no, oh, more bombs from more strategic bombers. Oh, Shocker Bombers, yes, that's what they're called. 3,000 health left on the commander of Blast Shield, but miraculously he survives. And now he's immediately starting work 
on the shield upgrade, he really, he realizes he was well. First of all, he probably realizes he's he was way too close to the front line, and second, that his life is probably more important than that resource allocation system he was uh, using before. So now he just goes and uh, goes for a shield upgrade. It looks like there are no more threats to his life for the moment, unless someone's built a nuke. And that was a big bomb drop there. I think there is an Awasa on the field as well. If I can only see it. Yep, there is an Awasa, already one star veteran. <laughs> Protecting the fat boys and the chickens from the ground assault. There is, of course, still plenty of fighters, not just from Donnie, but also from Yudi. But would you look at that? The island. The middle island. The weird, this weird pancake. He is getting cleaned up completely. All of these T2 factories that were pumping out so many blaze tanks are now completely gone. Uh, shield heavy upgrade also done for blast shield, so he has a super 45,000 health shield protecting him now. The fighters are literally too afraid to approach these restorers, they just get completely annihilated by a barrage of uh, anti-air missiles. <laughs> Some of the blaze tanks are attempting to flee, but I think that's all gonna be in vain. Look at this, look at this friggin assault force of these just restorer gunships look look at how many they are just look at this let's see let me see 175 restorers and more of them constantly coming in i'm sure some of them are getting shot down but damn if that isn't spectacular look at that the fighters are just too afraid to engage them for real <laughs> the fighters are getting shredded by the restorers alone. This massive restorer cloud just <laughs> a massive restorer cloud just flying with yeah, shows absolutely no signs of stopping, just keeps flying. Keeps destroying everything in its path. Look at this glorious flight here. You remember how one of our previous casts we had like a, a bunch of Hail Mary, you know, strategic shocker bombers out from the Aeon, while well, there's the real powerhouse of the Aeon Air Force. A massive swarm of <laughs> restorers destroying everything in this path. They also have a beautiful shot you can see in Awasa in the in the background. Well <laughs> those shots are super epic. It looks like Awasa might be in a little bit of trouble. Let me see where it is. Uh well no, it was getting chased down momentarily by some fighters, but I think they gave up now. So the Awasa will live to fight another day. <laughs> Look, the restorers are now approaching the air grid. Oh no, the beautiful air grid of Donnie. Oh god. <laughs> I don't think Donnie even has an air force to stop them anymore. So now the restorers are... Look at this. <laughs> Look at this, like, freaking comet of missiles. Look. Oh my goodness, yeah. Everything that comes out of the factories gets destroyed immediately. Oh, the devastation. Oh, the humanity. All the generators being shredded, exploding violently together with the factories. The beautiful air grid of Donnie is no more. It seems like not my thick air grid, says Donnie. Yes, 38 fight uh 38 factories, excuse me. Are now all gonna get annihilated by all of this massive just squadron of resources. Blast Shield has uh, 46 apparently. The air factories and uh Bully Doom has another 14, so I guess they just outproduced Donnie together and uh, yeah this looks pretty grim now for team two I uh, for team one sorry I gotta say the air grid oh they aren't even done yet there's also the air grid of the gray player of Trith now as well now that is also gonna get threatened because guess what they're gonna do after they are done with these uh, with these factories well they're just gonna go on to destroy more of the of those the Awasa is about to drop yet another bomb here on the T3 naval factory of Trith. Uh, it won't destroy the factory, of course, but it's gonna do some horrendous damage. Look at that. Somehow the battleship survived. It's completely intact, but yeah, all of the engineers, all of the T1 anti-air guns get destroyed. The Awasa is being chased down by Yudi's fighters. For some reason, <laughs> for some reason, No Fear is still sending some more Janus bombers out. I have no idea what's about that. What's up with that? I think Yudi is committing his tiny air force here in order to shoot the Awasa down, and down it goes. Meanwhile, though, Donnie, as expected, gets destroyed by blast. The Awasa falls down to the ground. Yudi's air force is completely eliminated, but the restorers still continue their rampage. They have completely destroyed the air grid of Trith. Uh, all the properties of Donnie gets transferred to Yudi, who commits some massive control K on a planet wide scale. Trith commits control K as well. Both players uh, quitting the game. 
And finally, it's just the Chief Jaguar left from Team 1. Whoo! What a game, what a game. I wonder, I wonder if you've ever seen a massive game like this. Look at this graveyard of megaliths. There's like, yeah, there's like six wreckages of just megaliths here and then more about to be added have you ever seen a game like this <laughs> have you megaliths dying in droves a freaking swarm of 200 restores over 200 at this point and more just keep coming oh my goodness what an epic what an epic duel rows upon rows of t3 land factories out from UD. well formerly now they are just no more oh man yeah, they've, they've already basically called GG's and now they're just talking. Why didn't you go air instead of EXP spam, uh, Chief Jaguar? Uh, <laughs> says air useless, clearly. <laughs> nice one, bro. Except for Epic Aeon, yep. The Epic Swarm, the true Valkyries of the Aeon, have been the restorers the whole time. And now I think they're headed straight for the commander of a Chief Jaguar, who is visible on the radars. I guess because they've got an Omnisensor somewhere on the front line. Oh yeah, Chief Jaguar did have like a Soothsayer here, which was, uh, you know, right on the front line and was also very impressive. Alright, well, let's witness the death of this man, myth, legend, Chief Jaguar. Who spent, he spent Megalith like there was no tomorrow, but ultimately it was all in vain before the awesome power of the pretty Aeon Moths, the Restorers. The glorious moths of death and missiles and lasers finish this game in style. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this cast as I did, as much as I did, because I enjoyed it immensely. And uh, yes, this is all going to be it for today for me. <clears throat> it should also be noted that uh, Team 2 was basically ahead on the economy. Uh, the, you know, ever since that Titan push that uh, Shen did, he basically, <laughs> you might say he won the game right there, because ever since that, that happened, uh, the mass income total was always on Team 2's side. That is something I remember from the replay, but didn't talk live, or, for, or from previously watching the replay, but I didn't speak about it live, but yeah. Thank you all so much for watching, I appreciate it greatly. Uh, if you liked the video, uh, make sure to uh, leave a like. And subscribe to the channel if you still haven't. Leave a comment down below if you want to see something else, or you want to see more of this, or you want to see no more of this. All de depending on that. Comment whatever you desire. But uh, yes, this is all going to be it for me for today, so goodbye. Take care, everybody. And I hope to see you again soon on the battlefields of the future. <laughs>